Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our first uh, regional ministry uh, and week service as uh, we journey with Jesus to the cross this Lenten season uh, through our, uh, our series, Be Gracious to Me, from Psalm 41. Today we will focus on uh, being sustained in sickness. The, the sick bed of Jesus we'll see is actually the cross. Um, we pray together uh, the service of Vespers. Vespers is on page 229. So you might have had it on page 229 mark. Let's sing our first hymn, 435.
In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers in iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say that heavy things poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O oh Lord, be gracious to me, and raise me up, that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated when we sing our next hymn, 421, in 421.
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his way to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. He does not deal with us according, or for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. O Lord, have mercy on us. Second reading is from the Epistle of St. James, chapter 5. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also, be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who <coughs> remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord. How the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And a final reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, 
that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We continue with our response read for Lent. That's on the top of page 231. Page 231. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation.
that the Psalms speak about you because they also speak about Jesus first. And your baptismal connection to Jesus can help with these words from Psalm 41. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. So first and foremost, Jesus is the one whom God the Father sustained on a sickbed. To be sure, the, the gospel writers, you know, they never ever recorded once that Jesus suffered from cancer or that Jesus felt uh, the feeling uh, of the effects of lung disease or never even said that Jesus even caught a cold. Or even that he would strike his foot against a stone. Think about stubbing your toe at night on the bedside table. As far as the Gospels are concerned, no. Our Lord Jesus Christ was the picture of perfect health. Right up to the moment of his arrest. Always healing. And never needing to be healed. The human body of Jesus was unblemished. That's what 1 Peter 1 tells us. It was uncorrupted by disease. Why? Because Jesus had no sin of his own. And disease came into the world as a result of sin. And Jesus is personally sinless. Nonetheless, just because Jesus had no sin of his own, we should not, therefore, think that he carried no sin at his body at all. No. Because he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world upon himself. The sinless Jesus was made to be sin for the sake of us sinners. <clears throat> God the Father laid on to his perfect Son every corrupt thing about each and every one of us. Jesus held himself personally responsible for our guilt. And he made himself to be the guilty one so that we could be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish. That is why the scriptures say that God made Jesus to be sin. Even though he knew no sin. <laughs> So that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. So because Jesus took upon himself all of our sins, he also took upon himself all of the bodily effects of our sin, including diseases and ailments. So, you might have a bum hip. You can find comfort in knowing that Jesus bore the pain and hobbled for you in his passion. Or you might have bad lungs. Knowing that Jesus literally suffocated on the cross can help you realize that you are not alone in your breathing problems. Isaiah declared and Peter echoed a promise from God concerning Jesus 
We also can pray even in pain. I mean, this is Psalm 103, which we read. Even in our pain, we pray, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? David says much the same in Psalm 41 when he said, The Lord sustains him in his sickbed. In his illness you restore him to full health. Those words describe God, the Heavenly Father's personal attentiveness toward Jesus, who is God, the fully embodied incarnate Son. So the Lord sustains him on his sickbed. There was a German artist named Matthias Grunewald. And he famously painted a picture of our Lord's crucified body. And it wasn't merely pierced with nails in the hands and the feet and the spear in the side. No, this painting showed Jesus covered in pock marks and discolored with the disease called the plague. That Grunewald and all of his fellow people were suffering from. He painted it as Jesus suffering from it. Grunewald wanted us to think of our Lord's cross as a sick bed, where Jesus suffered for us for our salvation, bearing both our sin and his bodily consequences. So David uses the word here, sustains. And that can also be translated as upholds, which sustains and upholds are synonyms. And God said this through the prophet Isaiah. He said, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. There have been some ancient artists that depict God the Father present at the crucifixion of Jesus. And in those depictions, the Heavenly Father is above and behind our Lord's cross, and he has his arms outstretched toward Jesus, holding in his arms the, his sacrificial son's body in place on that beam. Thus God the Father upheld and sustained the incarnate Son on his sick bed. David continues in Psalm 41, in his illness, you restore him to full health. Or stated another way, God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. In the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father restored to full health His Son, setting Him free from the weight of our sin and the burden of our disease. The resurrection of our Lord's flesh promises resurrection also to our flesh because He made Himself one with us. That is why Job confidently prayed, After my skin has thus been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, and my eyes shall be whole. Because Psalm 41 is about Jesus, the same psalm is also about you the baptized Christ. 
David said, for the purpose of your abiding faith and eternal hope, David said, the Lord sustains him or her. That is, the Lord sustains each of his chosen ones on each person's sickbed, in each Christian's illness, you, O oh Lord, restore him or her to full health. David's sustain, or his upholding, is a beautiful work. Jesus of Nazareth is the hand and the word of the Lord of hosts that upholds us. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exults. Your right hand upholds me, O Lord. Your Christ knows how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Are you at this moment a picture of hell? If you are, you did not reach that temporary state through your own efforts or strife. No, the God of Israel, He is the one who gives power and strength to His people. Is anyone among you sick? You did not get that way because of some accidental oversight in the heavenly realms or because the Lord, your God, has forgotten you. No. If you are sick and it has been allowed by the attentive grace and overflowing mercy of your God, who gives power to the faint and increases strength, even when we suffer in our bodies and struggle in our minds, Jesus is sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Has your dear Christian loved one died in the faith and departed this life? His illness was not his death. And her disease did not claim her life. The child is not dead, said the Lord, but sleeping. Why? <laughs> because David's word in Psalm 41 are faithful and true. They're for you. The Lord sustains us you on your sickbed, in your illness, he restores you to full health, even if it's on the day of resurrection, our greatest hope, and to which we all look forward to. Amen. And now, may all of our hearts and minds May the peace that passes all human understanding guide our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even into life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service on page 231, page 231, where we will begin singing the, the Magnificat with the two responses before it. Please stand to the sing.
services together on Wednesday. We're also uh, collecting an offering for uh, the Siberian Seminary. It's a special offering that we're working on every service. So there's also a basket in the back uh, if you'd like to give towards that as well. continues with our prayers. The prayers begin on the top of page 233, page 233. Please stand as we sing the period.